Hi, I'm Caitlin French, and today I'm going to show you how to make cordage. Here's some that I made out of silk, and also out of seaweed. Ta-da! But what we're going to be making today's cordage out of is iris. So these iris leaves have been overwintered and dried out in the garden, and I'm going through and I'm picking them up from the ground, trying to keep as long of stalks as I possibly can. I'm not taking it all from just one clump. I'm taking each individual strand so that I'm not taking too much or taking more than I need. I'm gonna harvest about 15 or 20 lengths of this. We're not gonna make that long of cordage, just enough for a walk. So the water that I have in front of me is just rainwater that I found at the garden in a bowl. You can use fresh water so it doesn't look so gross. But here I am, and I am taking three or four or five stalks of the iris, and I'm wrapping them around my hand, making small little wreaths. And I'm doing that so that they can fit into this small bowl full of water so that they'll completely soak. And I'm letting them soak for about uh, 10 or 15 minutes. We wanna work with the dried plant material that we then rehydrate to make it pliable to work with. Here we are gathering the last of it. Making sure to use all of what you've taken and not to take more than you need. Pushing down the last bits just to make sure that it all gets all the way soaked in the water. And here we go. So taking out my first piece of iris finding a long length and setting the rest off to the side. Now take your length and fold it in half. See how there's that little loop? Ta-da! Now pinch that loop with your non-dominant hand. And now you'll have two strands that you're working with. You'll have your top strand, the one away from your body, and you'll have your bottom strand. Step one, twist the top strand away from your body and then fold it down over top of the bottom strand towards your body. Using your non-dominant hand to then pinch that twist that you just put in. Now let's show that again. So you fold in half, pinch with your non-dominant hand. You've got your top strand and your bottom strand, bottom strand closest to you. Now you're going to twist your top strand away from your body. Here we are, put a couple of little twists in there and then twist it down over top of the bottom strand towards your body and using your non-dominant hand to then pinch and hold that twist that you just put into it and repeat that step. So we're going to take what is now the top strand, twist it away from your body and down over top of the bottom strand towards your body. Keeping your, the pinch in there with your non-dominant hand. And we go again. Away from your body, down towards yourself, keeping the twist pinched. There we are, and again. And again. Once you get the hang of it, you can start to go quite a lot faster, but see there, I've already got an inch there done and I was doing it quite slowly. Now, what do you do when you get to the end of your strand? or to the end of one length, or say one of your strands breaks. Well, here I am, I'm gonna show you what happens by just breaking this one off to pretend that this just broke itself off, and I'm gonna add in a new strand. So you take a new wetted strand and lay it alongside your old strand, giving yourself about a two or three inch tail from your, from your new strand. So you've now got your new length 
with your old length and you're going to twist them together. Treat them as one. And see now you've got that little tail there. Just leave your little tail there because you're going to deal with that at the end. See it's quite easy just to add in a new length. And continue twisting the top strand away from your body and then jumping it down over top of the bottom strand towards yourself. But see, we've already got our, our length there with three or four inches. Good work. See now, once I get the hang of it, you can go quite quickly. This quiet and methodical way of making cord I use it as a way to pass the time and also as a way to meditate. I'll make strands as I go on walks or when I'm traveling to places and they become small memories or small performances of, of a time spent somewhere. Now, when you get to the end, what do you do? Because you can't just you know, leave the two ends open because then the twist would just come right out of it. So you're actually going to tie the end. Now, some folks will tie the one strand to the other and possibly just, you know, tie a square knot and that works. But also you can just take the two strands, put them together and knot them. Now let's see what I'm going to do that here. It looks like I'm just finishing up the end of this cord. And here we are. So I take those two strands and I just tie the end of that cord. And that will anchor that. Ta da! Good work. Now, I'm going to roll it up into a, into a circle, but first I'm going to pull off while the, the cord is still wet. All of those ends of, of the bits where I put in new strands, just to kind of clean it up. It's not necessary, but if it's within the aesthetic that you want, then, then feel free. Now with our finished cord, I wrap them around themselves. And with that very end tail, I'm going to rip off the end and wrap the remainder around itself. And then I have this small wreath or this small memory of either time or place. But they do make beautiful small objects. I would love to take you on a walk now through my neighborhood. So I've soaked down for about 10 or 15 minutes some strands of iris. And I'm going to put most of them in my pocket. And here we are. I'm going to get this one started and then we can go on our adventure. Here we go. Most of what I do in my own art practice is connecting myself to place and whether it's the place where I, I live or places where I travel to, I like to get a sense of where I am and what the land base is. Now, when I say land base, I don't mean here I am and here's the land, but what I mean is that I am an active participant in the place where I am. So. I keep in mind that there are other humans there, of course, but there's also other plants, there's the earth, there's other animals, and all of these things have to work together in order to have a healthy land base. So that's usually what I think about in the start of my meditation, in the start of this med meditative walk. But here we go. I find that 
when I'm doing something simple like this, where it's just hand movements that are just a couple of simple hand movements to do together, making this chord, I'm able to let the rest of my mind wander and I can, you know, drift in and out of that kind of consciousness where you're looking at, yes, trees and plants and, and cats um, in the neighborhood. But it also means that I'm able to let my mind wander and think about either work that I'm planning on doing for my artistic practice or possibly think about readings that I've been um, either listening to on audiobooks or, or reading in person and, and just letting myself mull these things over. I find that in being able to take these walks, it, it kind of opens up my heart in that way where I can produce much more, I think, interesting artwork. It allows me to mull things over. And I actually put my energy into this small cord. And so I have stacks and stacks of these, these cord circles, these walks, these meditations that I've done. And then it becomes about, yes, the, the performance of, of walking and putting your energy into this, but it also means that I have these objects afterwards and they're markers of time. Look at that. I found um, some bark. So that came off of a tree. It fell down. It probably got rained on a lot and stomped on, but the fibers are usable. So I put that in my pocket. I'll bring it home and I'll use it later. Probably make it into another cordage, cordage walk. But what a way to ground ourselves in place. And my buddy. This is one of my cat friends that I get to see on my walks. Beautiful fluffy friend. That's kind of the beauty of this too, is I get to see people's gardens as I go on these walks, but I also get to pet cats. Now I've shown you how to make this rope just out of, you know, some grass, some, some iris. But in the beginning, I showed you with silk and also with seaweed. And I've picked up this, this bark that I'm going to use for later. So you can actually make this out of any sort of pliable material. You can do it out of strips of fabric. You can do it, you know, I did it with seaweed that was already pre-wetted down by the ocean. But really, the sky's the limit on what you can make this out of. So when I get home, I like to sit on the porch, clean up the edge of that walk, wrap it onto itself. And of course, depending on how quickly my hands were moving and how long of a walk I have, these cords can get pretty long. They're kind of, kind of beautiful in that way, measuring distance by what our hands are doing and how long it took for us to, to do this handwork. So at this point, I usually bundle it up together. And then I have a spot in my altar at home where I'll allow them to dry out. And then I have these beautiful objects 